All right, it's summer again in California, which means one thing. We get to drive around with the windows open. All right, it's time to remove the tape from the Samba. I don't see any more rain on the horizon, so no need for this tape here anymore. So let's talk about the power wall. Today I want to talk to you about the project that I'm working on in Chatsworth. It is a industrial size power wall. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a power wall is, it's a product that Tesla released a few years ago and essentially just a battery for your home, right? It's a thing that you put in the wall and then you can use it several ways. You can charge it off peak hours, right? When energy is cheap and then it store that energy there so that when peak hours come, then you pull that energy off of those batteries and then use it to run your home. And that way you save money. The other way you can use it is by putting solar panels up in your roof. And while during the day, while most people are working and they're not using electricity because they're away, then those batteries are being charged by the solar panels. But then in the evening when they come home and then, you know, everyone starts watching TV and, you know, doing living life at home, then usually that pulls the, the energy out of the battery and that way you save money. Those two main ways is how you will use this power wall, this product that was uh, designed and marketed by Tesla. Now, this is not a new idea. People have been using uh, batteries to run uh, homes off the grid, for example, in remote locations. Um, and even they have run batteries as backup, uh, as a backup system, or even to cycle them in the same way as Tesla system is designed to work, uh, using lead acid batteries and some other types and chemistries of batteries, right? So nothing new, but... I think Tesla's done a very, very good way in presenting a product that is attractive to homeowners, not only in price, but in design, right? By putting it flat on the wall. And so if you remember uh, a little bit over a year ago, I made a video of me building a box so I can house some batteries and essentially make my own DIY power wall, right? So, as many of you might have noticed, I actually never did complete that project. Uh, my financial situation did not allow me to buy the necessary equipment. And as many of the projects that I've started within the last couple of years, I just have not been able to have the resources to actually complete them. But as such is the case of the internet, there are others that have taken the example and then uh, gone to completion, right? There's this guy right here that, uh, follow my instructions down to the T and he now has converted a car and is using 100% recycled cells from dead laptop batteries. Um, there's Peter Matthews, there's the UK DIY Powerwall. These guys are proving that the concept works. That is not just a crazy idea that a few of us had a couple years ago of finding good enough cells to put up on the wall and to be able to run our homes with them. You know, these guys are actually practicing what they preach. They actually have DIY uh, versions of this power wall on their garages and they are running their homes with them. So moving forward, let's talk about my project. My project is of a industrial size power wall, right? And after it becomes bigger than about 100 kilowatt hours, then Tesla usually calls those a power pack. And this is what it looks like. Power packs have started to be implemented. Uh, the biggest one in the world is not too far from me here in a town called Miraloma. And uh, each one of these boxes, it's 100 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And so if you put 10 of those together, that will make a one megawatt unit. And the largest installation very close to me here, it's I think 88 megawatts. I'm making it the largest lithium ion battery storage installation in the world. Uh, there have been several others that uh, have installed this and there are pictures and um, articles that pop up online and stuff. And so that is essentially what I am going to do. Uh, and I'm gonna do that in a DIY version. How big is 
the the power pack that I am going to install? Well, the business that I am going to be installing this battery for uses on the average about 700 kilowatt hours per day. And so we decided that one megawatt of storage is not overkill at all because it's just a little bit over a day of storage, right? If something happens, if the power goes out for a day and a half, you know, this backup system might keep uh, this factory working. Also in the future, there will be uh, a whole array of panels to be installed in the roof. So the system becomes more robust and it can be standalone. Maybe they can even sell a lot of this energy back into the grid um, and actually generate some income. From Not only pay for all the investment of all the equipment of all the installation of this project, but also actually make some money uh, selling energy back to the grid and to utilities. So I know what you're asking yourself, what kind of batteries are you using? Well, here they are. This is what they look like. This is a 40 pound module. It is arranged in a 16S, 16 cells in series, and each cell is about 45 uh, amp hours of capacity. There are LG cells with 3.7 volt nominal, 4.2 volt max charge voltage, and this module is designed to be liquid cool. It's got an aluminum extrusion that two pouches are sitting up against and then that sits on top of a chill plate on the bottom. Um, here's how 30 of these modules look bolted all together. Each row has its own uh, liquid cooling plate, which all the lines will be connected in parallel so that they are all cooled down if they need be. Each one of these bricks uh, yields about 2.6 kilowatt hours. So in order to get 100 kilowatt hours, then you will need about 40 of them. The idea is to place these inside server racks. Uh, server racks are designed to hold sensitive equipment inside and they have enough room and space. And well, frankly, they look very closely to what our inspiration for this project is, which is the white boxes that Tesla houses their batteries in. There are also two other types of batteries that we are going to be using for this project. Um, these ones here are made by Bosch. These are Bosch cells. I don't have all the specs on these because I haven't started testing them. And then there are these other ones, which I almost know nothing about. I haven't tested capacity. I haven't tested much on these. But these three types of cells will be housed in server racks and will form part of the one megawatt uh, power pack that we are going to be building in Chatsworth, California for our client. So phase one of this project is going to be to install them with inverters that will charge the batteries at night uh, off of the grid and then use that energy during the day until the batteries are depleted, at which point then the inverters, they just bypass the grid and, so that the building never sees an interruption, right? And so then after hours, once everyone leaves and goes home, then the batteries will start to recharge for the next day. So that is my project there, guys. Remember, I am going to need some help. Uh, to put all this stuff together. So far, what I've been doing is figuring out all the components that we're gonna need, ordering them, sourcing out all the cables and the connectors and all the hardware and stuff. And so eventually, sometime in this coming week, I am gonna attempt to start putting all this stuff together. So remember, I put up a form here where you can sign up if you wanna be part of this, if you wanna help me out. I'm gonna need just general help putting together the stuff, soldering stuff, and also I am gonna need the advice and the services of a professional licensed electrician. If you have any experience in selling battery systems and doing all the permitting, and maybe even doing a UL listing approval and all this other stuff, then do contact me and fill out that form. I will need your help. Once this project's approved and finished, it's installed and tested, then these batteries are gonna become available for sale. And I might get first shot to offer those to you if you are one of my viewers, if you are signed up to my mailing list, right? So if you've signed up there, you might get an email any day uh, with the prices and the specs of all these batteries and only available to you at first and then eventually available to everyone, right? But if you will be needing uh, large quantities of batteries, these are probably gonna be the best. If you need in smaller quantities, remember, 
the these other batteries, right? The LG and the Samsung batteries from the eBay seller um, are great. By the way, you guys have been doing great things with them. Check out this picture here, right? It's very similar to my project that I have started and I'm in the middle of doing where I want to show you how to get up and running the quickest way. How do you build the simplest power wall, right? Using a grid tied inverter and a cheap 12 volt solar panel charge controller that will take the 36 volts from the packs as they are. The biggest problem in this whole project is to build the cable to connect all the packs using the XT60 connectors, right? That project is coming. Also, if you purchase some of those batteries, consider yourself lucky, I think, because due to all the shipping regulations, uh, the seller might not be able to keep shipping using a priority mail through USPS, right? I think he was forced to change and start using FedEx ground, which costs more, and packaging that they are forcing him to use uh, costs a lot more. And so he might actually increase the prices on these batteries to be able to pay for all the extra expenses that come with the new way of shipping and shipping within the guidelines and the rules, right? So I, I haven't seen him raise the prices on the listings on eBay. You might wanna jump on them. If you are planning on buying some of these batteries, you, you might lose the ability to pay $1 per cell. You might have to pay like 130, 141. I don't know how much he's going to have to raise the prices to be able to offset the expenses of shipping. With that out of the way, I wanna thank you guys for watching my videos. I wanna thank you for all of your support. To all my patrons, uh, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are awesome for supporting me and my endeavors and all my future projects like this one here, right? Um, it is to all your generous donations and contributions that I am able to, to be able to take some time and really pursue some of these awesome, awesome projects, right? And so thank you to all of you. Uh, and I guess we'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye. <laughs>